So I got a comment from uh, JADH Tops. He asked, hey bro, do you really recommend this telescope, the PowerSeeker 127 EQ from Celestron? Uh, do you recommend this telescope for observing planets and galaxies? Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about my experience with this telescope specifically. Um, so I didn't buy this telescope. This telescope was gifted to me uh, by my wife. So basically uh, it was, I think we'd been married. We had just been recently married. I had taken her to Hawaii. And uh, one of the things that I really, really, really wanted to do so bad while I was there was I wanted to hit up the observatory that was at the top of the uh, mountain in at the big island. We're right at the start of that mountain. I think that's where we're gonna go. Right up that road. It's so epic. It looks so epic. So we got to the visitor information center and they've closed out the roads because of hazardous conditions. It's about 48 degrees. Due to road closed due to ice and snow, the road will not open today. We do not know when road will open. <laughs> there was some really good um, scenery there. The journey up to them, uh, up to getting there, was beautiful as well. However, um, because it was an utter fail, one of the things that my wife had surprised me with was this telescope. When I first got it and I opened it, I just uh, never. Uh, I was intimidated and I closed it and I kept it in its original box for about a year. And, uh, and then when I opened it up again, uh, it was with the pursuit. And for me, like a lot of times, I don't tend to pursue things unless there's a goal to be achieved. And that's just how I am, just, just my personality. And so um, that's what I did. I wanted to capture the moon and I figured I have a telescope. Let me go ahead and assemble this thing. If you haven't seen the video on the assembly, I'll put it up on the link somewhere so that way you can see it. Uh, but essentially, uh, that's what I did. And upon completing that, you know, I was able to successfully capture the moon. And you can catch that experience. Again, I'll be linking it um, above. Now, the thing is, I've never, like, I'm a complete newbie. I don't know much of anything about astrophotography. Uh, other than the fact that, you know, I, I was a science geek, part of the science club in school growing up as a kid. So, you know, as much as a science nerd kind of knows, but again, in terms of the technical aspects of, um, uh, of astrophotography, I'm a complete newbie. So overall, again, my experience of this, of this has been interesting. But again, everything that I've experienced with this and the positivity that I felt from it is coming from a place of complete ignorance, not having anything to compare it to. Now, uh, so because of that, in a lot of previous videos and my replies to comments has been, yeah, this seems like a great telescope. But then again, I don't know anything. Uh, so, but I found a comment from one of the, uh, one of the folks that left a comment on the video uh, from Starship Mechanic. And I found, uh, his thing to be very helpful. So I'm going to read his comment and I'm also going to give some commentary that might help you with uh, the decision that you're trying to make. So what he said was, um, so this comment was posted on a video in which I was attempting to capture Jupiter and its moons. You can check out, check out that experience over here. So, uh, and he said, don't be discouraged by the inability of your scope to focus. It's not your fault. The power seeker line has known problems. Its optics are notoriously terrible. Uh, and so practically impossible to collimate. That is true. I got a laser collimator. I tried collimating this thing and then I move it and it's not collimated anymore. <laughs> I was just like, okay, that, that was a waste of time. Uh, I, in fact, I was intending on putting together a video tutorial. I was like, oh, you know, I collimate. Everything is in line. I move it again. It's not collimated anymore. I'm like so much for uh, putting that video together. So, um, but anyway, it's impossible to call a collimate. Uh, and oh, by the way, if you don't know what collimate is, collimate is essentially what, what it means is that the image that comes through the, the scope, you know, there's a big mirror in the back. That mirror reflects it into another mirror over here and that lines up. The thing is the imagery that's coming in, it's gotta be hitting 
everything's got to be lined up in a way so that it's center. Center is where the sharpness is at. Center is where you'll be able to get the most clear pictures. Unfortunately, the slightest movement on these things and the uh, collimation is just gone. I just got to... <laughs> they, you know what, let me just hide that flare for a second. Oh man, there's more flare. All right, here we go. Anyway, so yeah, there, it's, just, it's, a, uh, it's essentially impossible to collimate. Uh, meaning your pictures coming from this are not gonna be that sharp. So in comparison to like, if you were to use a camera or a more appropriate type of telescope. And he continues saying that, I hate that Amazon recommends it since it has probably turned people off of astronomy after trying it. And that might be true. I mean, it can be difficult. It requires a lot of patience. But in my case, I'm being the goal-oriented individual. I'm willing to weather uh, whatever challenge that might be there. Um, the Power Seeker is a terrible beginner scope. So there's your answer. It's not a very good beginner scope. Uh, it's a terrible Bird Jones design. Apparently, that's what this is. Uh, in terms of its makeup. There are better telescopes uh, for not that much more money and even smaller scopes for better quality for cheaper out there. So he states the problems are it doesn't stay collimated uh, and even if you get a laser collimator tool and if you check for yourself which I did um, you can set it up perfect and then with the collimation tool still when you move the focus is going to get messed up again. Also, the German equatorial mount is not very beginner friendly, which is this whole thing right here. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how to use it. I, I still don't, how, don't know how to use it. Um, I don't even, tr like, I looked at it and this thing was, uh, uh, it seemed complicated and I didn't even bother. Um, and he goes, uh, an AWB One Sky, which he said was his replacement for the Power Seeker is just $200. This usually goes for 160 or so. So for a little bit more money, you get this. Um, Orion, which is, I guess, a known brand within the space of telescopes, um, the Orion Star Blast goes for about 200, and they actually focus and can be collimated properly and stay collimated. Pretty cool. Even a uh, three-inch starter scope, like a fun scope, has less on paper performance, but in practice is a far better uh, performer since it would actually work and it has a parabolic primary mirror, which is the thing in the back here. Parabolic primary mirror, and instead of the spherical mirror on the Power Seeker, at the price of about 70 bucks. So really most tabletop Dobsonians are a better choice, and the first two I mentioned are all of similar specs to what the Power Seeker is supposed to be. The fun scope is less powerful, but still a better scope for planetary viewing. I too bought a Power Seeker, and now, I know that all the frustration it caused with optical problems and collimation issues were so unnecessary that for an extra 30 bucks, I'd have a much easier to use a more effective scope. Or for a hundred bucks less, I would have had a cheaper and still more pleasant entry to the hobby. I just hate to see someone unaware that they got screwed with something that seemed like a good deal, but in reality was not worth it. Keep the eyepieces and the tripod and mount. It can be good, but properly using an equatorial mount takes time to learn, which is uh, absolutely true. Uh, but you can tuck the scope away in a closet and replace it, or I could use it as a prop, as a background thing for some other vlog videos. <laughs> um, and, uh, and you can get a way better views and pics than the blurry messes that this thing will give you. So uh, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, is this a good scope for beginners? Well, uh, I would highly advise taking the advice of somebody a little bit more experienced than myself um, in terms of the feedback that they've given. Um, personally, uh, if I were to buy a telescope, would I buy this? I mean, knowing what I know now, I guess not, but it was gifted to me. I got it for free and it introduced me to the wonderful joys in the world of astrophotography. So for that, I'm grateful. But uh, at the end of the day, I know that whatever telescope that I get for the first time, um, it would not be my first telescope. Anyway, just like a camera, right? I know my first camera wasn't the best camera, uh, but you know, as you use things, you get to learn and know more about what it is that you like and what it is that you're interested in, therefore, you can then spend your hard-earned money on something that is of more interest and of liking to you. 
I hope that was helpful. Let me know. If you want to know anything else, leave it in the comments below. I'll see you soon.